and it's starting. Okay, it's recording. Hi everyone, um, my name is Elizabeth Moore and I am the marketing and designer um, with Chromorphous. I have jo Josh Kaufman on here with me, the leading inventor of Chromorphous. Uh, we will be discussing Chromorphous into further detail for those of you that are wondering more about our technology. So our first cr uh, question I have is, what is Chromorphous Fabric? Yeah, so uh, Chromorphous Fabric is a fabric, an e-textile, that changes color on demand. It means that push of a button or through an app on a smartphone or through some other type of input, um, the either the entire uh, color of the fabric changes or the pattern through the color change uh, can change as well. So whether it's solid color to solid color or solid to stripes or you have stripes kind of disappearing and reappearing over time. Um, the, the main thing is that you know you kind of decide how and when you want that color change to take place uh, in your garment or accessory. Cool. Okay, so how did Chromorphous start? Uh, so, um, really started out of a research group um, that formed in 2008, about 12 years ago at the University of Central Florida. Uh, that research group specialized in um, sort of specialty fibers and fiber, fiber fabrication techniques. Um, in the beginning, that mostly started with kind of like fiber optic and other types of fiber devices. Um, but over time, uh, the expertise in that group uh, grew to just encompass a lot of different types of fiber and fiber fabrication techniques. Um, and then a few years ago, um, there was kind of a consortium that was created uh, through an initiative by the federal government where some money was allocated to bring together both industry and academic partners um, to, uh, well, the idea was to bring some manufacturing jobs uh, back to the United States. Um, and they identified things like fabrics and textiles because uh, in the last few decades, a lot of those jobs that used to be here uh, were lost overseas. The idea was that if we um, you know, bring about new technologies, then other countries uh, will kind of be behind the curve um, so that even though normally it's cheaper to produce stuff overseas, if we have new technologies that can kind of only be made here, um, then we would create you know, new jobs and help the economy. Um, so that consortium was created in that first round of funding uh, we applied um, based on our idea of color changing fabrics. We received that funding um, at the research group at UCF. And then over the next few years, we developed that technology further and further to get to the point where, well, even within the first uh, six months of receiving that funding, uh, we were making full-scale prototypes of you know, purses and backpacks. Um, now we're pretty much at the end of that uh, funding timeframe. Uh, so we've spun out this company um, and we're hoping to uh, take the work that we've done and then kind of you know, hammer out the last couple of things that need to be figured out to get mass production um, ready so that we can produce at a larger scale and hopefully see this on the market before too long. Cool. So how does chrom chromorphous fabric work? Yeah, so we uh, make the fibers uh, and we have them woven in the fabric. So um, I suppose it could be knitted as well, but we're focusing on wovens right now. Um, the way that works is um, in order to weave something, you have a warp and a weft on the loom that does the weaving. Um, we use traditional uh, fibers uh, on that loom. Um, it's actually a partner we work with, a company in South Carolina that does that weaving. Um, so we use cotton, cotton nylon blends that are in the warp of the loom. And then our fibers are put into the weft. So they're woven in one direction. If you kind of think of, you know, as a grid, one direction and another direction, uh, that the yarns go in in a fabric, ours are in one direction and then the kind of traditional yarns are in the other direction. Now our fibers uh, are you know, small and flexible, um, but inside of each yarn there is a microwire. Um, it's a kind of metallic conductive material and that microwire, um, when electricity goes through it, it warms up that uh, wire just a little bit through what's called resistive heating. Um, around that microwire is a layer of synthetic polymer that has a pigment in it. And that pigment responds to temperature. So when the temperature, temperature of that wire increases a little bit, it changes the color from one state to another state. Oh, wow, that's impressive. Um, so how can the technology be used? Yes, so once it's woven into that fabric, 
when you take parts of that fabric and that are woven um, and say take you know a, a half inch or an inch and kind of group that together electrically, then when you pass part of that inch or whatever wide strip changes color. Um, so you can have the fabric, however large it is, have these stripes that start uh, changing color whenever you want it to. That's all controlled through the electronics. So what that means is whether you have products like purses or backpacks or jackets, um, I think the kind of things that we've made so far have been in that realm, you know, wallets. Uh, I think our first prototype was like a window blind. Um, so there's a lot of different types of products that it goes into. Um, you know, it could be even be uh, sports jerseys or something like that, where you have home and away colors. Uh, so the, the basic technology works through um, that color change being activated by an electrical signal. Um, but in terms of how it could be used then, once you have this fabric, what could you put it into? Uh, we see a whole way, wide range of uh, different types of products, whether it's furniture, um, office decor, wall decor, um, you know, interior automotive type stuff for car seats, things like that. Um, we really think that this is not something that's just going to be for, you know, small accessories, but could, could really impact a wide range of different types of products. Cool. So when do you think Chromorphous will be market ready? Yes. So that's a little bit of a tricky question. Um, in terms of the different things that we've developed so far, the good news is, is that even though this is a very new type of technology and there really aren't e-textiles you know on the market right now it's not something that's common at all other than like one or two products that really haven't made a lot of headway um, despite the challenges of kind of being in a new type of technology uh, our manufacturing is such that basically every component we kind of know how to mass produce the the challenge at this point is we have kind of one part remaining which is the electronic side so uh, we know how to weave it we know how to make the fibers uh, at large scale um, the electronics themselves in terms of like batteries and the control circuitry, that kind of stuff, you know, there are plenty of, you know, people who make um, circuit boards at large scale, that kind of stuff. We, we kind of know what that solution looks like. Mm -hmm. The hard part is, like I said, in each yarn in our fabric, at least of our fibers, every yarn has a microconductor inside of it that has to be connected somehow uh, to each other, to the external control circuitry. And there's just no good solution out there um, in the market for that. Uh, so we've had to come up with ways to do that, and we've been relatively successful so far. We just have to take the strategies that we've used there and try to scale that up to a mass production level. So if we can do that um, relatively quickly, then I don't see why this couldn't be on the market in a year or two. Great. How much do you think Chromorphous will cost when it's on the market? Yes. Uh, another tricky question, um, because... Again, we don't really have a blueprint uh, in this space in terms of uh, the supply chain for how this stuff would work. I mean, normally if you have a fabric, um, say just a cotton fabric, you know, that gets woven at a cotton mill, it gets sent out, it gets cut up into a certain pattern, sewn together, and then you have a bag or a shirt or whatever it is that you want to make. In our case, uh, the fabric is also an electrical device. And companies that do cutting and sewing, they hire cutters and sewers and seamstresses. They don't hire electrical engineers. So there isn't really a, a place in the supply chain to solve some of the challenges that, that come up when you're dealing with an e-textile. <clears throat> um, so uh, because of that, it's hard to say what our business model is going to look like. What I think we're going to do if we can get the solution down for the way we think we're going to connect our fabrics um, is that instead of really thinking about it like you do with traditional textiles where you have um, a cost per yard of, of that fabric, um, I mean, I could estimate that and say that it's something like the cost per yard for a nice silk, uh, but I just don't think that we're going to sell it that way. Because um, if I sell, you know, a thousand yards of fabric to a company, unless they know how to connect it and do all the electrical side of it, that thousand yards isn't very useful to them. The way I think at this point it's going to work is that if a company wants to make certain type of products, say they want to make a purse, then they would give us the kind of pattern for that purse, the cutout that we can then sew together, uh, or at least they can sew together. Um, we'll give them that, that cutout electrically connected and we'll just sell them cutouts. Uh, in that case, it's hard to say what that price would be, but I still think that if you were to look at it kind of per yard, how many of those cutouts you would get, I think it would still be relatively comparable to like a silk. Okay. 
Great. So what is the most challenging aspect of Chromorphous you wish your audience knew since you've mentioned, um, you know, there are some tricky challenges that we have to overcome with this technology? Yeah, the main thing is that um, this is a brand new technology. Uh, and so the stage that we're at is one of kind of coming out of the tail end of the research side and into the beginning end of sort of manufacturing, but the really, really early stages. I mean, we don't have a way to mass produce this yet um, tomorrow. Uh, as a result, you know, we get a lot of interest from people saying, oh, hey, uh, how much does this cost? When can I buy this? Or, mm -hmm. hey, can you make one of these for me? Uh, if I show my boss, I bet he'd like it. Uh, the challenge with that is that right now, to make one prototype, especially if it's something we haven't made before, uh, it's very time intensive. Uh, a lot of times it takes a new uh, thought for the design process. So we have to change the electronics because it's a different area. We might need a different type of battery. And all of that stuff uh, is just time and energy intensive. And so it's not the kind of thing we can turn around in a week and it costs a hundred bucks for us and we don't mind giving it away. Um, so I just, I, I, I hope people understand that given the early stage that we're at, that if you're very interested and you want to get into a partnership, one of the things that we can provide is the world's first version of a color changing product that you want. Um, because it's the world's first, it's going to cost a lot more than it will when it's in stores. But by putting that investment in now, that means that as we get more ready to do the mass production, we'll already have that design in mind for how we made it. So, I mean, every time we've made something new, whether it's a purse, a backpack, a dress, a jacket, each time there were things that we didn't quite see until we got into the specifics of making that particular product. Um, and so I think there's a lot of companies that come to us and like, oh, well, we'll wait till you're ready uh, to mass produce and then you can make shoes for us. Or something like that. Well, the problem is, is that if we've never made a shoe before, even when we're ready to mass produce, we're gonna to have to figure out all of the unique challenges that go into making a shoe that is made from an e-textile. Uh, so that's just one of the things that I wish people understood is that we're at a stage where we can get some things done, um, we're getting ready to, to, to figure out the mass production side, but if you want something new from us, it's gonna be the world's first version of it and it's gonna cost a little bit more uh, than it will when it's in the stores. Awesome, that's very understandable. Um, what is the overall goal and hope that this technology will solve for? Yeah, so I think one of the things that I hope is, is just that other than some minor changes in the types of fibers that are in our fabric, so you'll notice in the last 10 years, you know, t-shirts have gotten a lighter feel uh, than they were when they were just made of cotton, you know, uh, 20, 30 years ago. Um, but for the most part, you know, the way we interact with fabrics, how fabrics are made, what they can do, for thousands of years um, and yet every other area of our lives is intermingled with technology I mean your toothbrush is motorized you know you can talk to your TV um, things that used to just do one thing like a phone now have the internet on it and you can order a pizza through it um, <laughs> one of the things that I hope is that by merging technology with our textiles because it's something that we already carry around with us it's not like I'm asking people to here's some new product that you have to carry around with you you already wear a shirt you already have a backpack you already take a purse with you. By merging that with technology, I hope that people can change the way they think about what they're wearing, what they're carrying with them, and how they interact with it, and how they express themselves with those things that they're carrying around with them. Cool. So what industries can it be applied to? Yes. Uh, well, I think, um, uh, like I said in, in kind of the previous answer, it's um, a wide range of things that we think can be used for. So obviously fashion, um, you know, purses and things like that, dresses, shoes, um, but also, you know, automotive industry. And so, um, you know, if you want the interior of your car to change color throughout the day, um, this, that's something that could happen. Mm -hmm. um, interior design, so furniture, uh, window blinds. I mean, you know, you can think of um, a children's hospital where uh, the kid can change the color of some of the stuff in his room, depending on his mood or just to brighten it up. Uh, I mean, I really see a lot of different types of industries that that will uh, be interested in what we're doing and that we can give something that, that just otherwise isn't out there. Cool. Okay, so how do you hope to impact people within your industry and community? 
Yeah. So in terms of, uh, you know, in our industry, at least in terms of uh, the other um, researchers out there and kind of companies that are starting to try to emerge that are doing work in e-textiles, I, I hope if we're successful, that'll uh, inspire other people to say, this is, this is a space where you can actually do business. Um, mm -hmm. People want these types of products. Um, in terms of how I hope to, uh, you know, affect, um, you know, people and how they use the products. I mean, again, I think when you're at a store and you look at a new t-shirt you might want to buy, uh, the reason you buy one shirt over another is you like the way it looks. Maybe it has the right color or the right pattern. It seems to either go well with, you know, your hair color or a mood you want to project. Uh, with our technology, it's much more interactive. So maybe you're in a good mood at the beginning of the day and you have very bright colors, but towards the end of the day, you're feeling a little bit tired. It's been rough, you know, you're yeah. after lunch, you, you need a nap at three and you're not feeling that anymore. Um, not only can you project uh, the way you're feeling to the world, which is why we wear the clothes we wear anyways, um, but also there's a, a different way that you can interact with the things that you carry around and the things that you wear, which is maybe at the end of the day, you're too amped up. Uh, it was a stressful day and you want to kind of come back down a little bit, get home and relax. Um, we know that kind of, you know, color and shades and in your environment can change the way you feel or help you kind of recenter yourself. Um, so not only is this uh, type of technology a way that people can express themselves, but it's also a way that they can, you know, regulate uh, their moods and, and kind of get into different mindsets by changing what they're wearing or carrying with them or color of their room, the color of what they're sitting on, things like that. Okay, great. So last question uh, before we end this podcast. Um, what is your long-term vision for Chromorphous? Yes, so sort of medium long-term, obviously, is getting this mass-produced and seeing this stuff uh, in stores. I mean, that would be, you know, the dream is to, to be able to walk into a store or go online and see people selling products that have our fabric in it. Um, other than that, um, one of the things that, you know, we're looking at is without getting into some of the boring technical details, you know, starting with color changing fabric is a, is a good technical first step. Um, in terms of the, some of the challenges to manufacturing, uh, some of the challenges in the design, it's a little bit easier than some of the other things you can possibly do with an e-textile. Um, I think the, the reason we went the route we did was just starting with this type of technology is that in a sense it's quote unquote easier even though it's still extremely challenging by solving a lot of these problems for some of the type you know easier technology of just color changing and then getting into other types of technologies for e-textiles you know touch sensitive stuff things that can maybe you know uh, detect a heartbeat or something like that um, you know, my long-term vision is to be not just a color-changing fabric company, but an e-textile company. And we want to make textiles that can do a number of different things. Um, so hopefully, uh, if my long-term vision comes true, then this chromorphous color-changing fabric is just the beginning of that. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for all your answers. And uh, we appreciate our subscribers for tuning into this. And we thank Josh for giving us all this really cool information about Chromorphous and, you know, all the logistics that go into it. And I hope everyone has a better understanding of where we're at and uh, what we hope to do in the future. So thank yeah, you. Thank you.